What's up? What's going on people? So I was going to make my usual Russian icons video where I showcase the authentic icons in a slideshow format with some classical music in the background. But in this Russian icons video, I want to give my commentary over it and probably delve into more historical aspects to provide context. With that being said, before we get to the icons, I always have an influx of new viewers. So I want to get this little intro out of the way. So with that being said, I want you guys to please focus on the image that you currently see in the background. What are we looking at? As we can see, this man here, he is painting over the original icons, which depicts the saints, the figures as having dark skin, dark pigmentation, AKA being represented as a so-called black person but like you can see in the image he is painting them over white this is known as whitewashing why do these people do this they do this to eradicate so-called black people from history and include themselves and this whitewash narrative is the reason why it may be hard for you brothers the few sisters that are listening to grasp the things that i say and other brothers say when we say that certain historical aspects were actually so-called black, for example, when I mentioned that black people had rulership in Europe during the Middle Ages, during the Dark Ages, when I say that certain historical figures were actually so-called black, like um, um, Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, Charlemagne the Great, the King of the Franks, um, Constantine the Great of Byzantium, Believe it or not, believe it or not, these were so-called black people, um, royal and noble families, such as um, the Tudors, the Babenbergs, the Lancasters, the Habsburgs of the Holy Roman Empire, the Stuarts. These were royal and noble black families. But you would never know this given the narrative that is taught in your mainstream. And there's that saying, truth is stranger than fiction because as you can see brothers, he has painted this one white and this white version is what you're going to see in your mainstream, in the textbooks, on the showroom floor, in the museums, in the movies, in the school system and so forth. And these dark images, they hide them away in institutions like the Smithsonian, they hide them in the Vatican. A lot of these rich billionaires have a lot of these artifacts in their private collections and you will never know about this. But with that being said, we're going to take a look at some more images. So what they do, they hire and get these professional artists. They send them down into the tombs, the catacombs, and they get them to touch up, lighten, paint over the original dark images. So here's a restorer, and that's another thing before, before I forget. Whenever you hear phrases and terms such as restored, reconstructed, refurbished, remodeled, renaissance, remade, these are basically dog whistles for them destroying the original dark artifacts which shows them as people of color and then painting them over white. And what, and the lie they're going to tell you is that, oh no, they send these artists down there just to um, um, clean up everything to reveal the images. No, they're not. They are sending them down there, like I've mentioned, to touch up and lighten up the original dark images. Here are some icons being remade uh, one more time. The whitewash icons are what you're going to see in your mainstream media narrative because they own the education system, the schools, the textbooks, the movies, the institutions and so forth.
<laughs> and that's another thing. When I mentioned that the ancient, the basically ancient civilizations were all people of color, like the ancient Greeks before Alexander the Macedonian got up in there. Now, the reason why I mentioned Alexander the Great is because that's pretty much the first major rise rise of the Caucasian slash Idumeans. But those original people, um, the original Greeks, were actually people of color. The Etruscans, the Minoans, of course, ancient Kemet. Babylon, Sumer, these are all people of color civilizations. Now, when it comes to these statues, they're going to lie to you and tell you these are just sub-Saharan Africans slash Nubians because what they love, what they tend to do, they tend to get all the different dark races of people of the earth and put them into one box as like one sovereign race of people and classify all of them as just being Nubians or sub-Saharan Africans because they don't want you to know that these original civilizations were people of color. Oh yeah, I think I mentioned, when it comes to a lot of the statues, another tactic that they use, they tend to break off the noses and the lips to quote-unquote hide the negroid features and to make them look racially ambiguous to the point where you can't tell. And by default, they're just going to say, oh, this civilization was originally white or this historical person because there's no way that this ancient civilization or this historical person could have been quote-unquote so-called black because... What they teach is that we were just a bunch of slaves and servants, right? As you can see, all these coins, which they're just going to tell you that these are just sub-Saharan Africans. Or they're just going to tell you that they're slaves. Oh yeah, I'm kind of going off on a tangent because I want to focus this video on the Russian icons but the reason why I say different dark races are people because people is because we're all not the same. Of course, for those of you who read the scriptures, we know that the sea line goes through the Father. Now, just take like ancient Kemet for example. The reason why a lot of you, um, for argument say you Western blacks think you guys are the ancient um, Egyptians or people of ancient Kemet it's because you think because they're so-called dark skin, we're dark skin, so we're all the same. Now, when it comes to ancient Kemet, these are hermetic people. You know, your quote-unquote black Africans, your Nihilotes. There are different dark races of people. We're all not the same. This is why they say things like, how can so-called black people be the ancient Egyptians, the Israelites, the Vikings, the ancient Europeans, the Greeks? It's because... We're all not the same, but they love to put us all in one category of being only sub-Saharan Africans. But anyways, intro out of the way. I just want to, I like to do that for the new viewers. Let's get to the Russian icons. Actually, one more thing before we get to the icons. It's very important for you new viewers to understand some of the lies and narratives they're going to tell you when it comes to so-called black people in certain historical time periods. So with that being said, if you are not privy to the information that so-called black people had rulership in Europe, if I was to ask you right off bat, brothers, sisters, what are you looking at? You'd probably give me an answer like these are African kings or African memorabilia or African images, right? What if I was to tell you every single image that you currently see on the screen are all European family crest? Now, wait a minute. You're probably confused now. So the question beckons is, 
What are black people doing on European coats of arms slash family crest? Now some of the lies and narratives they're going to tell you to explain off why these exist. They're going to say that these are slaves. But wait a minute, as you can see from the coats of arms and family crest, some of these black people, black people are wearing crowns, as we can see over here. You see the black man with the golden earring, the golden necklace, the crown. Golden necklace, golden crown, pearl earring, crown, crown, crown. Now, what slaves do you know are ordained on heraldry? They have golden earrings, golden necklace and wearing crowns. Who wears crowns? Kings, queens, lords, dukes, rulers wear crowns. Slaves don't wear crowns. So they can't really go with a slave narrative. So what's another narrative they're going to tell you? Now they may tell you that all of these are renditions of Saint Maurice. Whenever you hear the term Saint Maurice, it's a straight lie because Saint Maurice is a concocted narrative they try to use to explain off why they have, why they have black men in noble posi positions in Europe. Another lie they may tell you, they may tell you that these are conquered African kings that they decided to put on their family crest. But that narrative in and of itself defeats the purpose of a family crest because a family crest, a coat of arms, represents your house, your symbol, your um, insignia, your family. You're not going to put another person on your family crest, let alone another race of people. And let me get this straight, you're going to put black people, quote unquote, slaves on your coats of arms or family crest and put crowns and golden necklaces on their head. Does that make any sense? So why do these exist? These exist is because what you are looking at, these are all noble European medieval middle ages families, nothing more, nothing less. But let's zoom in on some of, the, um, some of these images. So let's look at these two statues down here. Now I've shown this in past videos before. Now as you can see, the black man, he has the regal clothing on. He has this silver chain. He has the golden chalice. And he has the shield, shield with the double-headed eagle. What does that represent? That represents the insignia of the Holy Roman Empire. Like I mentioned at the start of my video, so-called black people ruled over the Holy Roman Empire, the Habsburgs. But they're just going to tell you that this is a statue of Saint Maurice. One more time, whenever you hear Saint Maurice, delete it out your head, it's a lie. Here's another statue of a black man in a suit of armor. It's not Saint Maurice. These are renditions of noble families in, the, in medieval Europe. Okay, now I just wanted to get that little intro out of the, out of the way. Now we're going to get to the icons. So this is an icon of the baptism of Christ. And as you can see, Christ, John the Baptist and the angels are all represented to be so-called black people. Now, another narrative they're going to try and run, they're going to say the reason why they have dark pigmentation is because over time it got dark. It got dark due to oxidation or it got dark because it was left in a monastery and the incense smoke darkened it. Now let's entertain that false narrative. I have to ask, as I've done in past videos, why does this alleged dark over time effect seem to affect the parts specifically where it shows their skin pigmentation? So I have to ask, why is this part still white? Why didn't the rest of the icon get dark like all of their skin pigmentation? And as you can see, Christ is, his whole body is exposed here. His whole body 
is dark brown but let's get another icon so here's another icon of the bapti baptism of Christ and just by looking at this there is no getting around this as we can see all of them are so called black but going on the narrative it got dark over time due to oxidation or it got dark over time due to old age look and uh, focus on Christ as we can see his whole body is exposed and it's dark brown but right here his shorts his trunk trunks are still white so I have to ask why didn't that part get dark over time why does this dark over time effect seems to affect the parts specifically where it shows their skin pigmentation now it sounds stupid when I say it out loud but I have to say it out loud because those are the games they're gonna try and run on you one more time the Israelites the people of the scriptures were so called black So now here's an icon of St. George the Dragon Slayer and as we can see all the figures are dark skinned even though this icon, icon is a bit withered. So now here's another icon of St. George the Dragon Slayer and as you can see this one is in pristine condition and look what these icons look like when they, when they haven't been altered or um, withered over time. So let's zoom in. See? So called black men. And one more time. Why is this? As you can see the horse is still purely white. Why didn't the horse get dark over time like he did? As I said, it's so specific that, that this dark over time effect affects the part specifically on their skin pigmentation but nowhere else on the icon does this darkening effect happen. So here's an icon painting titled Saint Francis Preaches to the Crusaders. Now this was painted by a man known as Bonaventura which was painted in the 1200s located in Florence, Italy at Chapel Bardi. Now to make a long story short and to super super simplify it basically Saint Francis was a man who came from wealthy parents. He got sick, he took a pilgrimage to Rome he saw the poor and the poverty that was going on, came back, devoted his life to Christianity or Catholicism, um, donated to the poor, who was also known as patron saint of merchant and animals. Now with that being said, as we can see from the painting, from the icon, everybody is being depicted as so-called black people. So now here's another icon slash painting, painted by once again, um, Bonaventura, located also in Florence, Italy, in Chapel Bardi, Chapel Bardi, and this is titled 
Saint Francis drives out demons. And as you can see, once again, everybody is so called black. And I'm gonna repeat myself over and over again in this video. But as we can see, if we just focus on this woman here, as we can see her dress is still purely white. So I'm gonna ask the question one more time. Why is her dress still purely white yet her pigmentation is dark if the narrative is if the narrative is that images like these like these get dark over time? As you can see, the pigmentation is specifically dark because they are representing so-called black people. So here's an icon titled St. Francis um, Nurturing Lepers. And one more time, everybody's so called black. As we can see, St. Francis is washing feet. So this is an icon titled St. Francis Leaves His Parents Home. So this is a painting slash icon titled St. Francis Receives the Rule of the Order. So now this is titled St. Francis Questions the Gospel. Now one more time, just to remind you guys, all of these were painted by a man named, man named known as Bonaventura. And these were all painted around the 1200s. Because once again, that was the time period where so-called black people were in rulership. So now this is titled The Death of St. Francis. One more time, everybody is so called dark, dark pigmented. So now this is an icon titled The Canonization of St. Francis. 
Now, um, St. Francis was canonized by, I believe, was um, Pope Gregory the Ninth. All so-called black people. One more time, I'm going to say over and over again. It did not get dark because of oxidation. It did not get dark because it was left in the monastery and it got darkened by intense smoke or it didn't get dark over the passage of time. They are painted dark pigmented because they are representing so-called black people. Simple as that. Now, when it comes to, you know, of course, Catholicism was like the main religion in Europe and the Catholic Church was started by so-called black people and basically it's just ancient Babylonian teachings mixed in with the scriptures because, you know, our, people, our people's rulership in Europe was not righteous and skipping forward ahead a couple hundred years after all of this, when it comes to King James, King James was making mockery of the Catholic Church and the Pope because he was saying, and as you can see, they canonize and they worship and they deify saints, thus regular men. Basically idol worship, this is what, what our people were into. And basically King James was, make, was making mockery of them, saying things like um, they worship saints, they worship the dead, um, they pray to the Virgin Mary. And for those of you who read the scriptures, we all know what Christ says, Yahweh Shai. He says, Our Father who art in heaven, not our mother Mary, but this is what a lot of the Catholics do. They pray to Mary, but it's not actually Mary. They that's what they tell the public. When you see the when you see the image of the woman and the child, it's just basically Samaram Samaramis and Tammuz or the mother goddess and Nimrod, Aphrodite, Isis, the divine child. But they're just going to tell the public it's the Virgin Mary and Christ. And he was King James was making mockery, saying things like, Let me get this straight. You're saying that the Virgin Mary is sitting at the right hand of the Most High, Yahweh, and basically Mary is answering people's prayers and sending them down. You know, he had a huge beef with the Pope and the Catholic Church. That that King James. So speaking of the Virgin Mary, here's a collage of images, icons of Virgin, the Virgin Mary, Christ and Saints. And like I just mentioned, as we can see, anytime you see the image of the mother holding a child, it's not actually Christ and Mary, but that's what they're going to tell the public. One more time, it's actually Isis, Samaramis, um, Aphrodite, the mother goddess, what have you, and the child is Tammuz. And I just want to make it clear for you brothers, for you sisters, let's just say if you, you somehow get your hands on, on any of these icons, please don't hang them up on your wall in your house and start praying over them because that's still idol worship. Do not pray over the, these images just because you found out these are so-called black.
So here's another icon of alleged Mary and Christ. Now look at this icon brothers, as you can see everybody is so called black, but if we zoom in here, look at this, as we can see Mary is being deified, this is all pagan, just because they're so called black it doesn't make it righteous, and like I've said many many times I'm going to say it again, when, when it comes to the popes and the clergy, they know what they're worshipping behind closed doors because as I said this woman alleged Mary is actually Aphrodite Samaramis Tammuz I mean not Tammuz that's the child um, Isis what have you they know what they're worshipping behind closed doors but they're just going to tell the public that this is Mary and Christ I'm going to say it again, Christ literally tells us how to, how to pray, you know, the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name, key word, our Father, not our Divine Lady, not our Mother Mary, what have you, but this is what the Catholics do, this is what Catholicism does. Here's an icon of the Archangel Michael with some saints. Here's another icon of the angel Michael. Here's an icon of the angel Gabriel. Look what these icons look like when they're in their pristine condition and they haven't been whitened over or repainted or destroyed over time. So here's another icon of the Angel Michael.
So here's an icon of Yahawashai slash Christ, Michael, and the rest of the angels. Of course, Christ in the middle. I'm assuming that's Michael at the top and the rest of the angels at the side. So here's another icon of Michael and angels. All so-called black. So here's like a pastel of another angel. I don't know which um, specific angel this is supposed to represent. But regardless, this angel is so-called black. So here's an icon depicting the angel Raphael and Tobias. Here's another angel. Another one. Some more.
there are no there's no getting around any of these images brothers sisters please don't let them lie to you and tell you that these get dark um, these got dark over time Another icon showcasing the angel Gabriel. Here's an icon showcasing the nine martyrs of Sisychus. Icon showcasing holy martyrs. Icon depicting King Solomon. One more icon depicting King Solomon again. Icon depicting King David. One more icon showcasing King David again. Icon depicting the birth of Christ. There's no getting around any of these images, all so called black people.
icon depicting Christ enthroned or Christ with selected saints. Icon of the Saviour Another icon of Hamashiach slash Christ Icon of Christ, Christ's entry into Jerusalem. Icon of Christ in his youth Another icon of Christ. Here's an icon of the resurrection. Another icon displaying the resurrection. <laughs> the brothers on the side got some clean throws. Here's an icon displaying Peter and Paul.
Now here is a manuscript showcasing Christ healing the leper. And here is an icon of all saints. So I mentioned at the start of the video that Constantine the Great was a so-called black man. So here is an icon showcasing Constantine the Great and his mother Helen being so-called black. So here is another icon showcasing Constantine the Great and his mother Helen being so-called black. You know, the Catholic Church Catholicism was actually started by so-called black people. Byzantium, the Byzantine Empire, was ruled over by so-called black people. And when it comes to Catholicism, all it is is basically the ancient pagan Babylonian teachings mixed in with the scriptures. Constantine was a venerator of the sun, the X symbol for Osiris. Now I may I'm going to, I may go into more detail in part two because I'm going to be doing a part two because there's more icons to get through. And I may go into more detail on Constantine the Great. Oh and one more time. Brothers, sisters, just because you find out these people were actually, these historical figures were actually so-called black, please do not put them on a pedestal. You know, melanin does not equal righteousness. So now here is a coin showcasing Constantine the Great. Now look at the features. Or a medallion, sorry. But look at the features. Now just for contrast and just for comparison. This is the fake version that you're gonna see in your mainstream. This is the image, these are the busts, the statues that you're gonna see on the showroom floor in the museums when you type in his name on the Google search engine, when you watch um, documentaries on Constantine the Great. Let's put them side by side. You see? Once again, pay attention to the features. Look at the staunch difference between the two. And that's not to say that, oh, before I get to that, one more time, this is the reason why they break off, when it comes to bust and statues, why they break off the noses and the lips to hide those quote unquote negroid features. 
And it's not to say that every so-called black person, of course, has, you know, the wider nose and the fuller lips because so-called black people come in all forms, shapes, sizes and phenotypes. Look at the difference between the two one more time. Look at the nose and the lips and the fake version. We'll go back to the medallion. So now look at, let's look at our con um, contrast with the icon. See, before and after. This is the renaissance. This is the reconstructed. This is the remodeled. This is the refurbished version, one more time, that you're going to see in your mainstream. And this is the image that they're going to hide away. Or, one more time, like I keep saying over and over again, they're going to tell you the reason why Constantine the Great and Helen is dark pigmented. It's because the image got dark over time. But focus on Helen here. Why is her veil, her headdress, purely white? Why didn't that part, like I keep saying over and over again, get dark over time? And as you can see, it's on her head, right next to her face. You're telling me the darkening effect only affected the pigmentation, which shows their hands, their feet, their faces, but nowhere else on the image. But those are the games they're going to try, going to try to run on you. Brothers, sisters, please don't let them lie to you. So that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to be doing a part two because there's more icons to get through. With that being said, subscribe, please like the video. For those of you brothers and sisters who want to financially support my video making efforts, you can donate slash tip to me on Patreon, Cash App, PayPal and YouTube memberships. With that being said, give no praises to the Most High Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai. Deuces.